Harvey holds the ball aloft. Never and Hardwick. Down yeah, the ground. Never. Free kick paid. Hardwick was bowled over at centre half back, so relayed to the centre for an Essendon free. And it means that Buick will take the kick down towards the half forward line. Blumfield, a fierce tackle to the Kuda Feeney's hand pass goes astray. McKay's been in exciting form. Gives it off to Camparelli, who's also been very good. Down towards Whitnell. I want a big day from him today. The prior hand pass goes astray. Hamill thought about the hand pass, then blazed away in towards goal. It bounces away from Fletcher, but he will have time to steady. And bring it back towards Michael Pryor and just keeping it in play. Absolutely perfect. We'll, well head back to Fletcher. The Bombers, as always, just uh, cross the ground in defence, looking to get a two-on-one situation and run it out freely. They've had a, a two-week break. They look uh, fresh, they look sharp. And Darren Buick, one of the finals veterans, has just picked himself up 50 metres. And this is going to take him deep into the forward line. A bit stiff then. I mean, Darren Buick... Gave all, gave all the indications that he was going to play on. We see him take the mark, and he does go. He wants to go. He's looking, he's looking. And uh, Scott Camparelli actually runs at him as soon as he deviated to the left there and penalised 50 metres. Having sucked him in, he now squeals for the 50, and he's got it. Well, he's a goal kicker, but he's too far out. And he's a finals veteran down towards half forward. Kudafides takes a timely mark in defence. So Kuda from the last line goes short, still behind half-back Camparelli. Camparelli out towards the members wing. Nelson gets the run of the ball, chopped off by Barnard. Barnard gathers, it's pretty slippery. Now Nelson's got him, ball spills free. Hamill, great pass, and right in front, Whitnell. He's got Manton, of all people, first goal scorer, Manton. Well, the surprise positional switch at the start of the game and already bears fruit Jerry. yes he was lucky on that one he just got on the end of a nice handball and uh well i think uh, it was paul barnard that made the blue just early uh, match nerves he should have just laid off the handball but in fact uh, the turnover came and lance whitnell did it well he sucked in the player drew fletcher away from his uh direct opponent glenn Madden, who kicked a goal and uh, a couple of matchups cooters on alessio bradley's with moorcroft Sexton's got Dean Wallace at centre-half forward, Rice and Rioli and McKay on McCurry. That's Manton's second goal for the season. Here's Pryor, defending for the Bombers, wider to Solomon. Shepherding sees him clear and Solomon chips it in towards half-forward. Allen stands his ground and virtually takes it uncontested. Carlton looking good very early on. Camberelli again, taking the hand pass, kicking down towards half-forward. He's in everything at the moment. He wants to go, Glenn Manton, and he does, over the top to Beaumont. He's a left footer, he's 50 out, he spears the pass in, and Lance Whitnell takes the mark, 35 metres out, 45 degree angle. Well, it looks as if uh, Glenn Manton, who's starting at full forward, is uh, actually running up to provide an option across that half forward line, dragging Dustin Fletcher away from the, uh, the goal square, where he's perhaps more comfortable, and Lance Whitnell is doubling back and uh, getting closer to goal. Whitnell has kicked 50 for the season, now he's kicked 51 and the Blues are away to a flying start. Lance Whitnell gets their second, the 20-year-old from Layla. And Carlton sneaking out to a 12-point lead. Well, just good possession. It started with uh, Matthew Allen, who positioned himself well across the half-back line. The ball was brought inboard uh, with not enough accuracy. And uh, Steve Alessio couldn't get on the end of it. Matthew Allen did, and a goal resulted. Flying start for the Blues against all odds. They've come in long odds today in this game. In the centre, Somerville beats Allen. And a sneaky little hand pass in the middle. Going past is McCurry, long and high to the forward line. But Kutafidis is back there. Played his best football this year at centre half back for the Blues. Across the ground, and Allen takes the mark. Right half back flank. Glenn Manton kicked the first goal, involved in the second goal. He's got more incentive than most because he was delisted by the uh, Bombers and he supported them all his life. Lived over the road. Now with Carlton against his beloved, former beloved Bombers. The ball close to out of bounds, it stays into Massey. Beats the uh, attempted smother by Somerville. Gee, Lappin got up high. Manton again. Is that holding it? No, just over the line for a boundary throw-in. So what a start for Glenn Manton. 
was smart enough to take not to take possession of it, Drew. He just uh, knew the ball was there but didn't actually grab it. In the midfield matchups, Long is with uh, Brown, Ratton and Masudi, Camparelli and Buick. Kicked by Beaumont just inside the 50, but Somerville takes the mark. Michael Long, seen of his triumph here in 93 when he won the medal. Sean Wellman not being really too good to say he might be limping off, and he could be right. Now the Bombers take it out towards centre wing. Blumfield, kicked by Blumfield, high to the 50. Silvani works to the front, gets the ball away. Moorcroft, back to Blumfield. Blumfield finds himself a bit of space. Sexton camped underneath it and takes a good mark. Well, Sean Wellman is coming from the ground and the, the Carlton full back line and, uh, well, the whole back line is just standing tall at the moment. Yeah, Blake, Blake Carousella, come on, Joe. Yeah, thank you, Aussie. Carousella on. Uh, Sheedy's made a habit of starting him on the bench this year. We'll find out just exactly what the problem is. In the meantime, Sexton's feeling the pressure. Gets it out wide towards Massey. He's on half back. The youngster yeah, except for it's hard for the to beat down field. Yeah, he's, he's just, okay. He's yeah. okay. Early right, he'll get up. But uh, right now the bombers are rattled. They need a goal. The Blues are on fire, and uh, I think the uh, Essendon fans would love to see one go through the big sticks at their end just to settle this game down a little. It's a good act, though, isn't it? <laughs> he drew everything out of it. Well, it worked. In towards Manton again. A couple of Carlton boys arguing over it. Opens the door for Michael Long. Kicks it down towards Moorcroft and Bradley. Moorcroft leads in the race. Almost caught one in the back. Rioli can't get into it. Bradley beats him. Oh, good pressure, Moorcroft. He persisted and it forced the turnover to Long. Kicks down in the forward line. Matty Lloyd, if it sits, is this their first? Lloyd wobbles it through for the Bombers' first goal of the day. Well, that's the goal they desperately wanted, and it came uh, in unusual circumstances. Uh, Craig Bradley just didn't get the kick away well enough. Moorcroft's pressure was outstanding. And then the long ball over the back uh, puts some space between the goal mouth and uh, Steve Silvani and his direct opponent slammed one home. I could ask Richard Osborne, Aussie, uh, we're having a look at Sean Wellman down there on the sidelines, but what's the breeze like down there? Well, you notice Craig Bradley did go left to screen, but the breeze is very minimal, Sandy. He's almost going across the, across the ground, but Sean Wellman trying to get that ankle going. does look very proppy, so we'll keep you up to date with that. Somerville, Buick, gives it away. Did he throw it? Oh, unintentionally, I think. Do they count, John? Yeah, yeah. unintentional throw. Oh, the, the umpire's down. Do they count, John? Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a start. The umpire went down. That was John Harvey. Picked himself up and he's quite okay, but in the meantime, Aaron Hamill has taken the mark and he's going to have a shot. 45 degree angle, just outside 40 metres. Carlton making a very exciting start. Here's uh, John Harvey. And uh, it could have knocked a bit out of him because he's actually taken the opportunity to go to the opposite end of the ground and let uh, Andrew Coates come in and take the centre. In the meantime, let's watch Aaron Hamill guide that through for the Blues. So Carlton are able to answer. Aaron Hamill hasn't missed a game this year and he's kicked his first for the day. Yeah, it did come in unusual circumstances, but uh, they all count once they're on the board. Now, in my mind, that wasn't a throw because it was just uh, Darren Buick paddling the ball to himself, but it was intercepted and uh, adjudicated as such. And the Bombers were so insensitive, they thought they'd just put John Harvey on his backside. <laughs> what a start by the Blues. Three goals straight to Essendon, one straight. And just keep an eye on Peter Sumwell. He's jumping early and uh, putting the hand into the face of Allen, but not that time. Ooh. Camparelli roves Allen's hit out. Hitting the ball hard, Hamill, ridden into the ground. Whitnell did well. Bit of a fumble by Barnard, but Masiti clears for the Bombers. Out towards the wing. Nelson, good one-hander. Ben Nelson, deep inside 50 for Hamill. He's got Fraser Brown in support. Here's Brown number 20 to the top of the goal square. Good discipline kick, but Touch. Solomon gets back there. Touch, play on. A live ball, and now a ball. Yeah, it was Brett Allen called, touched off the boot very early, Drew, but obviously didn't believe that the players heard that call, so we see it touched by Michael Long off the boot and uh, being called by Brett Allen from that moment forward, so 
certainly couldn't pay the mark. Now another great chance for Carlton here. Solomon number seven, Beaumont. Solomon high, Ooh. play on, says the umpire. Beaumont to the goal square. Oh, Alan score. front on charge, and it's legal, says the umpire. The ball still in the field of play, and now gets over. Now, what about that, John? That was front on for Alan. Is that legal? It was. Well, he made contact with the ball, not the player, Drew. If uh, we have another look at it here, we see he actually makes contact with the footy. He's not watching the and, footy. But he, made, but he made contact with the footy rather than preeming the player, in my opinion. I'll tell you what, the others, uh, before that uh, possession, though, there was a high tackle to Beaumont, I think it was. There's another replay. and Well, she was pretty stiff, I think, if you were yeah. in the Blues camp. Yep, could have been a couple of frees there. Well, I reckon you're lucky to get away with it if you're not watching the football. Yep. Hardwick clears for the Bombers, up towards midfield. Wrestle before the ball gets there. McKay put his opponent to ground. Murphy for Carlton. Off the left hand to Sexton, who kicked the first Whoa. goal last week for the Blues. Race here and eight for Bother. Not a great hand pass. The ball's pinned in. And a good decision uh, by the umpire, John. Absolutely no chance to get rid yeah, of it. No opportunity prior to that tackle being made. The handball comes in. Hits him lace out on the chest and uh, wrapped up immediately by McCurry, so nothing he could do about that. Carlton leading by 12 points. McKay. Well, it was like a bouncing ball, wasn't he? But he did it well. Rice to Murphy. Up towards Hamill and Co. once again. Wallace forced to score, but he's given away the free kick. Hamill is going to have a shot. Yeah. Michael Pryor in the hands of the trainers. That's not Essendon's only problem at the moment. It's Aaron Hamill who's going to have a shot for goal. Fraser Brown saying, here they are, straight through the middle. This to make it four straight. And a really hot start for the Blues. Once again, it was a pretty line ball decision. This time it went the way of the Blues. 45 out. And one behind. Yeah, agree with you totally, Jared. I mean, it certainly looked as though Wallace's intention was to spoil the ball rather than cream the player, and uh, the free kick paid against him for marking interference and high contact when it in fact looked as though he was just trying to, to spoil the footy. Aussie bench news? Yes, we can see there Sean Wellman still off, Barry Young, Fraser, and Mark Johnson. Fletcher it is who brings it back into play. Blumfield does well. Matty Allen had no chance of getting at it. Just inside 50, so already Carlton a double S and an 8-4. to four. Blumfield to half forward. Bradley will tidy up at the back. Well, Whitnell's got to come charging through and he won't get there. Blumfield standing his ground. That's the one kick that will kill Carlton because Essendon just zone off in that area. They've got to be able to run the ball through the centre and kick the ball over that centre half forward position. Blumfield's kick in towards the middle once more. CD a high ball down the wards right half forward. Nelson gets a bad bounce. Michael Lock an opportunity. He is an opportunist. Oh, oh, John, was this after uh, he took oh, contact? I, I don't. Well, I mean, certainly after Moorcroft's hands make contact with the footy, but it's very, very quick. There's not a large delay, and the slow motion probably accentuates the delay. Yeah. At normal speed, it certainly seemed very close to the time he took the footy. Yeah, I'd have to agree, John. There didn't seem to be any intent in that, just an accident. A Morris medalist in 1994. Kicking from just inside 50. Lovely kick by Gary Moorcock. He's got the bomb as second. Well, Gary Moorcock just sneaking away from Craig Bradley on that occasion. And uh, coming up with a pretty fair goal under the circumstances. Uh, he would have been just uh, had the marbles rattled a little bit by this, well, cousin, uh, distant cousin of a coat hanger. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, certainly uh, flaunting with danger there for the 50 metre penalty, but didn't matter anyhow. Bummer's good fight back now. Steadier for the Bombers. Carlton 3-1. Essendon, two straight goals. Midway through the first quarter. Allen gets it going. Carlton's way. Long out of the middle. Straight up the centre for the Bombers. It comes to the front of the pack. Carousella. Great kick. It clears them. Or Silvani right on the line. 
That's interesting. Did he mark it? It was called a behind. Did he juggle it over the line? John? Yeah, if he juggles it over the line, once if he makes first contact inside the field of play and second after, then it'll be a behind. Comes in short to his veteran skipper, Craig Bradley, 35 years of age. What a career. And third in the competition in the number of kicks for the season. Kick by Bradley. Pinpoint. His disposal is usually fantastic. Sexton. And the Blues doing it the same way as they did last week against the Eagles. Pretty straight up the ground. Murphy goes back to Beaumont. The kick to centre-half forward. They've drifted up. Lappin takes the mark. He's got Andy McKay from defence. Unmarked out wide. Lappin goes to the goal square. Hamill sets himself. Oh, oh good night. Well, they've got a problem in uh, defence here, the Bombers. Well, Hamill is just too quick, I think, for Dean Wallace, and that's his direct opponent, even though he's not yet on screen. And that is uh, a great sit, a great set, and a good mark. He's got to finish it off this time. Well, last week against the Eagles, their long kicks and their contested marks were their highest figures for the season. That's how they won the game and shocked everyone. If they can do it again today, who knows? Oh, oh but he's missed from about 10 metres out, Aaron Hamill. And you might well shake your head, you Carlton fans. Pity, such a great mark. Still think that there's a, uh, a speed match up there for the Bombers. Dean Wallace won't be able to go with uh, number 36 from the Blues. Let's have a look at his reaction. Devastation. And a mouthful from Dean Wallace as well. Still in their scoring zone, though Heffernan was unable to clear it. Look at Cooter come charging through in towards full forward and marked on the last line of defence by Michael Pryor. Away he comes, back towards half-back and Paul Barnard tucks it under his arm, then feeds out the hand pass to the running Michael Long. Another long hand pass in towards Somerville. He's on centre wing. The Bombers desperately trying to get it inside 50. A high ball. Big pack of players, Rice waiting down in front, now pounces on it, out the back it comes, Sexton tries to lock it up, couldn't get it out the back to Rice who goes again, Bomber fans and players are crying ball, now Paul have none of it, under 10 minutes remaining in the first quarter. Sandy Sean Wellman's had his ankle strapped very heavily, just waiting to come back on the ground now, so good news for the Bombers. And Sandy, one of the keys to the Blues in the last uh, few weeks, end of their good form, has been Michael Sexton and a great save there, he's back to some of the form that uh, saw him as one of the premier centre-half backs in the competition. Yes, he's one of those players when he plays well, Carlton appears to play well. He's had feet problem for a number of years and uh, there were some at Carlton who thought he was uh, very close to the end, but he's fought back well. It's also a question mark over his shoulder after last week, but he's quite OK. Here's McCurry, dynamic, but off target. That's just his second possession and it's been well held to date by uh, Andy McKay. Carlton bench, we can see who have we got, Ozzy. Yeah, still no change from the start, Sandy. White, Fletcher, Hogg and Ange Christou. Christou coming back into the lineup for Hickmont. Oh, once again, Carlton employing the short kick out. It can often be fraught with danger. Bradley and Silvani combine in towards the middle. Allen takes it, gives it quickly off to Camparelli. They look good as they go down towards the Whitnell territory once more. Wallace could have marked that. He elected not to, and Beaumont stolen it, giving it to Brown. His trouble. Fraser chipping in towards full forward. Does it beautifully. Whitnell plays on. Here's another one. Chris Massey. A bit of a concern out there at the present time. Mark Fraser's about to come onto the ground, and he's their quickest player. Camparelli charges straight through, goes without the ball. Strong tackle. Van Nelson was certainly built up in the upper body. Scott and he used it to advantage. Sorry, Drew, but Scott Camparelli has already had seven kicks in this match. Aaron Hamill's already had seven kicks in this match. And if Camparelli's kicking the football that many times, you know that uh, the Blues are pushing hard and long into uh, attack, as we've seen with the inside 50 uh, score. Well, he does go well against the Bombers. Eight goals in two games against them this year, even though Carlton have been flogged both times. McKay bounces off. Moorcroft's got, Moorcroft's got the oh. footy. Intercept. It spills to Lappin. Straight to centre-half forward. Oh, one-hander by Barnard. But a free kick to Whitnell. Barnard interfered before the ball arrived. And I'd suggest that Lance Whitnell's doing the holding there rather than... Barnard's, uh, Barnard's got a handful of jumper, Whitnell's got a handful of Barnard's hand. And look at the space for Fraser Brown. They're not entitled to get that much room inside the attacking 50. 
in those situations, Drew, normally, and we can't assume, but I, I can only say that the umpire probably saw Barnard grabbing jumper first, and then Whitnell's reaction was to grab Barnard's hand. So Fraser Brown kicking for Carlton's fifth. This is against all the odds. Most thought to be a landslide, like the Liberal government today in Victoria. Brown goals. Are you shocked, Jared? Well, I'm not shocked that uh, Carlton are competitive, but uh, at the end of the day, the scoreboard uh, is in the same ratio it is now, Drew. I think that will be a massive upset. There's no doubt about that. But you have a look. They've got the uh, talent in the midfield. If they dominate, then they only get uh, so many opportunities up forward. Razor Brown. What a star in this first quarter. Five individuals have Carlton's goals. In a stunning start. Still just over six minutes remaining in this first term. Summer will wins it but it's Brown who takes it out of the middle long and direct down towards half forward once again Hamill could have come off second best in that but it's floated wide towards Whitnell chasing him is Barnard and he gets him close to the line they keep it in play the Bombers Johnson loses it to Massey Massey it's a high kick round the body just poking it inside 50 desperate times now for the Bombers the Curie's away but it's going to come back it's a Carlton free kick Glenn Manton who kicked the first goal of the match as a free kick, almost 50 out. Wants well, to go on with it pretty quickly. And this is the one that uh, Drew was talking about earlier, Fletcher coming in front on and making contact. Ratton bounces out, but it doesn't turn to the left as he would have liked, and one behind. And Sandy, the Bombers have made another change. Prior off, Johnson on. I was quite surprised they didn't start Johnson on the ground. Very hard yeah, at it. And as is. we can see, Barry Young about to come on also. So a few problem, problems for the Bombers early. Yeah, they're getting flogged in the middle of the ground at this stage, uh, Ozzy. And they're also uh, picking up plenty of free kicks. It's 5-1, to one, but the pressure of the Carlton forward line, I think, has been the, uh, the key to their uh, scoreboard at the moment. The centre break's also in their favour. Allen in front for the kick out. McKay at the back with him as Rack. The pair combined. McKay in the middle of the MCG. A little too wide for Manton. Wellman, that'll test that ankle. And he slaps it over the line deliberately. And he's been pinned. Up by Andrew Coates, correctly seen. That's illegal. Probably not in the ideal position to see this one, but nevertheless a, a correct decision. But no doubt at all what Sean Wellman was trying to do there. Fletcher defends. Straight back to Manton. Camparelli, yet another kick. What a first quarter he's having. Fletcher! Right, right. He's pushed on to Lance Whitnell. And that's a better matchup, I think, as far as the Bombers are concerned. But uh, Carton are just pushing their entire back line forward of the centre of the ground. And the Bombers can't get it out of their danger zone. Fletcher comes very wide, almost Carlton-like, to Fraser. He's made a meal of it, but he's done well. He's recovered. He was hassled, but he still got his kick. Down towards Rioli. Dean Rioli's on centre wing. An exciting young gun. Gives it across to Mercury. Another one to Mercedes. High floater up towards the half forward line. The Bombers desperate for a couple close to quarter time. Long going inside towards Blumfield. If it sits, he may be in business. Push. Gets the hand pass across to Solomon. He was shoved. And Blumfield will take the free kick 55 metres out. Ironical cheers go up from the Bomber fans. He plays on in towards Lloyd, who takes the line. Matthew Lloyd will shoot for the Bombers third and his second. So far, 83 goals for the season. Just a talented player, we know, a super talented player. And what an important uh, shot at goal this one is. Bombers need to get some more winners in the middle of the ground. Only Michael Long is uh, getting his hands on the football. Mark McCurry well held with just uh, two kicks at the present time. Blues have got a host of high possession winners in the middle of the moment. Lloyd so far, one kick, one goal. Now it's two kicks, two goals. This is a confident approach to the goal, John, isn't it? Just doesn't look like he's going to miss. And he actually calls for where he wants the ball to be delivered, and uh, the Essendon midfield is just nowhere to put it for him, and he takes it every time, or very nearly anyway. Jamasidi also four kicks, including one in that passage of play. So 
He needs to finish the quarter off strongly. Dennis Pagan looks on. The Kangaroos meet the winner next week in the grand final. Allen takes a long run up. Alessio on the ball for the Bombers. Brown goes to ground. Clever tap by Mercury. Murphy's there for the Blues. Back he goes with the hand pass. Could have feed his kick to the 50. Sure. Off Whitmill it comes. Chance for Lapper. Open goal. Another one. Well, once again, it started as a uh, just too easy centre clearance there for the Bombers. They had their hands on the ball first, but they gave it away. And it was uh, Fraser Brown who got it on to uh, Justin Murphy and then to Cooter. And this was a free kick to Lance Whitnell, if ever was a free kick. That's a double suplex hold. <laughs> You're right, Jerry. <laughs> um, if they're uncertain as to who's holding who, they'll call play on. But certainly, exactly as you said, it looked as though he was being held quite clearly then. Doing the damage for the Blues. Camparelli's had nine kicks, a couple of marks. He's had four kicks inside 50 and two centre clearances. And Aaron Hamill, Aaron Hamill, seven kicks and a goal. Well, the Blues won't mind missing out on the free kick as long as they get the goal. They've had six different goal kickers. Ratten to Kudafidis, up towards half forward, the punch to the front. Solomon, the youngster, just 19 years of age, hand pass knocked down, it spills to Heffernan. Heffernan off the left, drops in short. Great play by Kudafidis. The Blues have started sharp, but that's not a good hand pass. Young off the bench, takes it towards the line, and Murphy helps it out. Carlton by 19 points the last time these two teams met. The Bombers won by 76. Yes, but uh, we're seeing a far different Carlton side this time. Peter Sumville off the ground and uh, Alessio into the ruck duties. But the pressure of the Blues has been phenomenal. They're intercepting handballs and creating bomber mistakes. CD to Lloyd. Lloyd centering kick coming across the face of goal. Blumfield slipped at the critical stage. The door opens for Bradley. Wobbles a low left footer down towards the centre wing. Hardwick almost threw it out. Rioli couldn't get a clear run of it. Now he's forced to tackle. A cry of ball. Hardwick plays on. And away he comes. The Bombers in towards Lloyd territory again. No mark taken. Karras fell in there. Whisked away from him and over the line. And Sam, a fantastic smart effort by Steve Silvani. Probably one of the only fullbacks in the league that would have got to that. Sensational work. Let's go back to Damien Hardwick to tack on the football. He risked life and limb for that one. One of Silvani's trademarks, isn't it? That could have been a high tackle. Blake Carousella. Who's got used to starting a game on the interchange bench. Will have a shot for the Bombers fourth. Well, I'm surprised he did start on the interchange bench. He is uh, an exquisitely talented player, Blake Carousella. Generally returns them with a couple of goals and my mind is the James Hurd understudy. Well, he's been one of their goal kickers this year. He's been at 33 so far this season. But accuracy has sometimes been a problem. A let off for David Parkett. Turned 57 last Sunday, David Parkett. What a belated present this would be. And already, Sandy, the Bombers, have had, the uh, Blues have had six individual goal kickers. That's why they're uh, going to be tough to stop. Camparelli's in the back pocket. Got his own footy, Camper. He wants Allen. He can't get a clear run at it, but Lappin did for him. Poked it straight up in the air. Hardwick taken high, but did get his kick down towards the 50. More craft. Gets it off to Long. Carousel, he's missed one. This time, he misses again. That's what would have been running through the brain, I think, uh, at the time of execution of the kick. But he was running exactly where he kicked it, between the goal post and the point post. Didn't straighten up at all. A minute remaining in the first quarter. Blues have possession. Can they get another goal? It would be a stunning opening turn against the minor premiers. Oh. Kicked by Bradley. Man in front, Blumfield couldn't take the mark. Carousella, well, he just took his eyes off it. Maybe he's lost confidence after those last two shots. Back to Johnson, slips a tackle. Kick by Johnson to full forward. Silvani's there with Lloyd. Play on says the umpire. And that will be a ball up right in front of goal. 
Chris Massey last up with it. Matt still at full forward, but this time uh, Sean Wellman's tracking him around the park. Bounced by umpire John Harvey. Ground in fantastic condition. Massey on all fours. That's a bit of trouble. Rioli a snap. Lloyd actually had to go the punch from behind. It's palmed down to Masiti. The ball gathering machine. A smother by Ratton. And pass back to Silvani. And he rushes it behind. I think that was a good thing to do at that stage. They're under the pump. Gee, their defence is working very well, Carlton. Outstanding defence at the moment. Uh, at the other end of the ground, they're under pressure. And Dustin Fletcher's now Aaron Hamill's third opponent. This could be uh, costly. Steve Silvani being sent off with the blood rule. And he's been holding that defence defensive half together so uh, he'd be in a hurry to get back on once they sort it out. There's four seconds left so I think they should be <laughs> yeah. right. I think they'll be right. It'll take him that long to run off anyway. <laughs> this will be uh, like a basketball finish. This will be the longest four seconds in sport in Australia this year. Well, well, Michael Sexton coming off the ground as well. Jared, how about this? Sexton the first goal scorer for the Blues last week. That would have been 100 to 1. It would have been, yeah. And uh, today, Manton, he would have been 1,000 to 1. The week-to-week -week double would be a million to 1, those two, Sexton and Manton. <laughs> how much of it did you have, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't. I think it was the Blues last week. They kicked seven goals in the opening term, and uh, effectively the game was over. You don't get that feeling at the moment. The Bombers are just hanging on. Yeah. Well, the four seconds are about to run out. And there's the siren for quarter time. Great start by the Blues, who came in underdogs, but lead by 16 points at the first change. 6-3 to three goals, five. Michael Long has been pushed into the forward line. They need some uh, more avenues to goal. Second quarter is underway. Fraser Brown tries to rip it through the middle. A succession of hand pass. Ratton back to Brown. Oh, he could pop one over the top. This could be an exciting start for Lappin. He's 55 metres out. Goes with a long, flat kick, but he pulls it. Fletcher gets a fist to it. Is able to poke it down in front. Back to Fletcher again. Wellman in the back pocket. Looked to have uh, an ankle problem early on. It appears at the moment to be OK. Hardwick to the outer side. Johnson was his target. Kudafidi's at the back. Johnson's an exciting young player. But he's taken it over the line. Hard at the ball. Throw in on the outer side. Carlton going into the second quarter with a 16-point lead after a, a flying start. Lappin again. Around the body. Blumfield will try and chop it off. He gets ridden into the ground. Fletcher could have been held when he didn't have it. It was missed. And they pile on it on the outer side. No one's going anywhere. And umpire John Harvey will come in and take charge. There's Dustin Fletcher, Scott Cabarelli. Very, very good first quarter. Ten kicks, one hand pass and three marks. The football was almost his. Johnson obviously is now going to be his shadow. He's hard, hard as nails, all right, Mark Johnson. And Camparelli would be a target at the moment for the Essendon Brains Trust. A good mark to lap it. Free kick coming back to the Bombers. Hardwick will take it for being shepherded out of that marking contest. In between half back and the wing. Up towards half forward with the kick. Good stretching mark taken by Fraser. Run by Barry Young. He approaches the 50. Centres the ball to centre half forward. But Nelson's there for the Blues. Things just not quite clicking at the moment for the Bombers. Kick across the ground. They've switched the play. And Beaumont has it. Murphy peels off. Beaumont back into the centre corridor. Good delivery to Massey. Chris Massey, a youngster, playing just his 21st league game. On the bounce to Murphy. Draws a man. Not a great oh. hand pass. A shocker. He put his teammate under pressure then. Has to uh, mop up himself. Oh. And also put McKay under pressure. What are you doing, Justin Murphy? Johnson's hand pass. Out in front of McCurry. Still McCurry. A bit of a flip up for Long. Well done, Massey. McKay, the ball got behind him. He dives at it. He's oh. holding it. Yeah, look, and by the letter of the law, that's right. I mean, McKay did the right thing. He had to lock it in, but he dived on the ball. Having dived on the ball, he lunges at the footy here. He's actually dived on it. Dean Wallace tackles him, and uh, you've got to hit it out immediately, immediately the way the rule reads at the moment. Lloyd leaps and marks. And the Blues don't want to give Matthew Lloyd too much of the ball. Two goals already, and this distance mightn't bother him. Great leap, he's kicked from 52, floats, wobbles, just gets away to the left and didn't quite have the distance. Marked on the behind line by Sexton. 
But a great mark by Matthew Lloyd. He has a two grabber, but uh, they are looking fragile, the Bombers, because he is the only one looking dangerous and uh, capable of kicking a goal. Massey didn't quite get onto that kick. Whitnell forced to fly, then knocked down towards Lappin. Getting plenty of it. Nothing on offer, so he goes straight up in the air. Difficult one to grab. Barnard and Ratton both had a piece of it. The young hand pass put his team out under pressure. Manton had it and lost it. Murphy could be pinged, written into the ground. And without harping on the point, the, the reason that one's different is Murphy had possession of the footy before he went to ground rather than diving on the ball while it was on the ground. On centre wing. Whitnell doing the ruck work. Tried to slap it away, but it went straight to Fletcher. Tumbles it onto the left foot, down to a forward again. The uh, St. Wallace gave him the left, and then on the way down gave him the right, so... Uh, he's going to get reported. I think it was on the blind side of the umpire, Jared. I mean, it, it certainly yeah, no, he's certainly... No, now. Dean Wallace not volunteering the number. I'm sure there are plenty of Blues players in there that'll tell him it's 21. Michael Sexton left the ground. The mark taken the, the left. It's the right that comes in, I think. That's uh, either the left or the right. But the left forearm, probably. But the umpire on the centre-half forward side of that contest. So now Sexton going off with the blood rule as a result of the contest. So, uh, well, it was a nose that was already bleeding. So yeah. he didn't need the treatment. Hans Christo replacing Michael Sexton, who has been a real star this afternoon. He's only had five possessions, but he seems to have been uh, a key element in the brick wall that has prevented the Bombers from getting near the goals. And the 50 has probably been paid for uh, language after that that incident took place, Jared. Well, Johnson now having an altercation initially with Massey, but uh, this is Silvani. A high kick into full forward. Can they take advantage of it? Hamill. Beaumont in trouble. And he'll pick himself up from the bottom of the pack as Essendon defends grimly. There's Johnson and Camparelli. Don't worry about young Johnson. He's a goer. And Scott Camparelli, probably best on ground as Rioli leaves the ground. He's off and Buick is on. So the Bombers making changes. Away comes Hardwick. Buick straight back onto the ground. Oh, Marks in front of Rox. We've got to get a wriggle on now, the Bombers. From half back up towards half forward, Kudafidi slaps it down in front, then tries to go again. Moorcroft wanted long. long he was held and he's got to take a free kick. Carousella calling for it, a floating, ugly punt. Doesn't make the distance. Rice ridden into the ground, then lost the footy. Bradley's at the back, but uh, the whistle has sounded. It'll be a free kick to Rice. He's at half-back, given away by Moorcroft. So he decides to head for the hills and to the outer side. Christou will let one go from half-back. Draws the player into Murphy. Murphy goes back. The possession game that Carlton plays. So far, it's working pretty well today. Hamill's a big flyer. Couldn't take it. Lappin is a fierce tackler. Gee, they are pumped up today, as you would expect. Ratton around the body towards Brown. Fraser, too good. Well, Mark McCurry took him on, but he failed in the one-on-one -on -one contest, and now Brown has a shot at goal. It's a two-on-one situation. Should have been the spoil. And Jared, you would, you would have loved that, just the vision of Brett Ratton to see Fraser Brown out of the corner of his eyes. And he's a, he's a genius uh, in and under. But I'm just surprised Mark McCurry didn't tap the ball down to his uh, teammate. He's a finals veteran. 12 finals. Not going to quite make the distance. Big fly was there, but no mark. Is that Lappin at the bottom of the pack? He took that classic in round one, and he's tried another one there. Sexton still can't believe his misfortune as there's Lappin once more. In the goal square and rushed through for a minor score. What about a ground level, Aussie? The Bombers look flat. Sometimes the weekend off works for you, or other times it, uh, it can count against you. Yeah, I suppose there's two schools of thought with that, Jared, the week off, but definitely they do look flat. But with the, the Blues, they've had a fair bit of the ball this quarter. They need to put scoreboard on pressure on them because they're only three goals up. If they can take advantage of that, it could be over. Well, that rush behind was the first score of this quarter, and we've been playing eight minutes. 
Comes out to Young. His kick towards half forward. Kudafidis is there. Well, he covered that ball with everything. Got his body behind it. And the ball out of play. Interesting, Jared, that uh, two weeks ago in the final against Sydney, at this stage of the game, Mark McCurry had had 13 possessions. Today, just four. Well, he did limp off against the Swans at uh, quarter time. I, I guess he's come in with an injury cloud, but uh, he's got to find the football more often, you're right, Drew. Young couldn't take the mark. Speak of the devil, here's Mark McCurry with a little hand pass. Hardwick, a high ball to half forward. Slips through Allen's hands. Kudafidis fights hard at ground level with Long. On all fours, Christou. Great to see him in the side. Ratton is there. Players being knocked over left, Five right, contact. and centre. Free kick. Yeah, contact with Ratton's head there, so free kick by. Kick by Murphy down the boundary line, short of the 50. Manton on the forward line, juggles, can't mark. Wellman somehow gets the ball out to Hardwick. Solomon oh. cut his teeth at Broken Hill. That's a shocking kick and just outside 50. Whitnell, open side of the ground. Manton in short. Whitnell goes oh, oh. too short. It's, it's a great. pity. And uh, he was looking for Camparelli. That is a mark to Johnson. He elected to play on that. Campo's got it now. The hand pass back out. Chance for Manton into Hamill. A goal. I think the problem there, Drew, was the fact that Johnson didn't think the umpire would be alert enough to pay the mark after he was actually attempting to spoil the ball. But when the ball then returned back to him after he punched it away, he wasn't expecting a mark. And he, he goes straight away. As soon as it comes down, he's gone there, cocks the handball, Camparelli runs at him, and uh, turn over the footy and a goal to the Blues. So uh, just didn't think that the umpire was going to be alert enough to reward him with that mark after his initial attempt was to spoil. Well, it took a long time to break for the first goal in the quarter, but importantly for Carlton, they're the ones that have got it. And the Bombers breaking down badly across half forward. They may have to sacrifice the uh, steadiness of Dustin Fletcher and push him into the forward line. Hamill's got two goals. The Blues looking pretty good. Here's Fletcher, round the body, down towards Michael Long. Takes the mark. Just inside 50, but he'll be kicking from around 50. been a wonderful stage for him over the years especially in 1993 a norm smith medalist his dashes out of the middle down into the forward line set this ground alive he needs something today he's the skipper found the woodwork beaumont having a spell on the bench Carlton. Murphy to bring it back into play. 24 plays 46. Christou setting himself to come back out onto the ground. Murphy, a long kick, straight down the middle. Brown at the back. Oh, he just used strength. Allen at the bottom. Somehow the ball got out to Brown. Oh. Look at him, twisting, turning, dodging and weaving, but he lost it to Fletcher, who spirals a long putt. Back towards full forward. Oh, yeah, Silvani. Is he giving away the free kick? Yeah, free kick paid against Silvani. I, I really, the signal given was for holding the arm, but I must admit I certainly didn't see that infringement from here. It looked as though Steve Silvani's only intention was to get at the ball, and in a marking contest, he's allowed to do that. The umpire has to determine whether his prime objective was to mark the footy. Um, that really doesn't seem as though there's all that much in that uh, arm wrapped around Lloyd's. Lloyd's right arm, but uh, that was what was paid. While that was happening, Massey is off the ground for Carlton. Pusto on. Lloyd shooting for his third. And keeping the Bombers in touch. Missed it. Only to the tune of one point. And nice. Silvani remonstrated. With Lloyd ran straight at him. Drew, I think, uh, Sandy, I think the problem is the fact that we see players lock arms like that fairly regularly and uh, for one to be pulled out like that is a bit of a concern and here's Silvani running straight at Lloyd and just uh, Matthew Lloyd trying Lloyd trying to get another crack at that goal that he just missed by falling over. John, I remember when Silvani played on Lockett earlier in the season everything went. Yep. The Bradley kick out was good. Taken by Heffern and off to Hardwick. McCurry. Claimed by McKay but too late. 
Essendon, we've seen a number of occasions just in the last couple of minutes where Essendon players are standing around waiting for somebody else to do the, the business. And even then, uh, Mark McCure and his teammate didn't know who was going to go at the football. Look at Fraser Brown. He's just going in yeah. straight lines, playing instinctively. McCurry then. It's been very quiet. Three kicks, a couple of hand passes and one mark. And he adds a behind. Well, two weeks ago he was kicking goals. Today he's kicked two behinds. Craig Bradley, what a fairy tale this would be for the veteran. To get to another grand final. Nelson in the back pocket. Wasn't there in 95 when the Blues last won, and 93 when they lost a grand final to the Bombers. Real stack up here, up close to centre wing. And Bob will ball it up. Great to see a big crowd here today. Over 80,000 here at the MCG today. And prior to this weekend's finals, the biggest finals crowd had been 57,000. Look at 61 last night, but something over 80 today. Brown to Murphy. Murphy did pretty well. Held it out the ball. Didn't actually take possession of the footy. Had the awareness to just juggle it a little bit and uh, was claimed. I thought he had the awareness to throw it away. Sure. <laughs> Murphy from centre wing towards the 50. Whitnell wrestles and allowing Manton over the top. He plays on quickly. A oh. bumper by Ratton. That's expensive by Brett Ratton and so rare. And the umpire will ball it up. And Ratton knows the importance of a little fumble there. Midway through the second term, a 20-point lead to the Blues. Just have a look at a stack of players around the ball. No positions out here at the moment. It's going to be hard for Carlton to get this ball out. They're just 55 metres from goal. And it's interesting that Peter Sumble went to the bench uh, midway through that first quarter and he still remains there. Whitnell uncontested. Christou tries to help the ball on. Again, it's blocked up, and umpire Allen has to ball it up once more. And Alessio having to go into the ruck. They have been robbed of their second tool down in that forward line, and they're really struggling to come up with a winning formula across that half forward line. Bombers have won 14 of their last 15 games, and their last eight straight. Ratton rips the ball out. The ball well smothered. Good bounce for Whitnell. Hand pass back to Brown. No penetration with that kick. Very high marking contest. Now a Rovers contest. And again the umpire will ball it up. And by Coates <laughs> coming in at 100 miles an hour nearly slips. Jared, you mentioned earlier a few of the Bombers boys were just waiting back, waiting for things to happen. It just happened then too. When that ball went to ground, we saw Solomon and a few of his mates just stand back, not charge at it, which is unlike Dean Solomon. Well, Barry Young is uh, on Fraser Brown, but he's just giving him far too much latitude at the moment. A wrestle. Gee, McKay went through but went without the ball. Fletcher back into trouble. And this is going to be Sandy, another baller. Well, I've had five ball ups in a row. Can you call some footy for me? <laughs> Rioli's just come back out on the ground. She's had a quiet day so far. Dean Rioli, just the one kick and the one hand pass. Moorcroft having a spell. And the tackle count, Sandy, is Essendon 19, Carlton 7. But I think that just illustrates it. Carlton are doing the chasing. Here's McCurry. Maybe they'll get clear here. Fletcher on the end of it. Hurriedly onto the left foot. A lot of pressure. Rioli gets a shocking bounce. Good one for Bradley. Rioli persists and pressures him into a short kick. It's Mark Homer by Brown. Call to play on the ball. It's touched. Well done initially by Rioli. And finally taken over the line. Now it's the Bombers who are blocking this up, isn't it, Jared? Is that, is that the way to go? Because they're behind by 20 points. I well, suppose I don't want to get any further behind, but... I'm not sure it is the, uh, entirely the Bombers blocking it up because Carlton are chasing, uh, pushing down with them as well. And I think it's just when so many people are man on man and uh, with a roving commission through that midfield, you are going to get these uh, block-up situations. Seven minutes remaining. Barnard. Kuda Fides. Been good. Been very good, Kuda. Seven minutes left in the first half. Buick, where he likes to be, around the pack. Not a very good kick, Rioli and Bradley hanging on to each other. And we've got another ball up in the minute. Just the forward pressure of Carlton has been just sensational. You just saw there Darren Buick 
not able to run through the middle as we uh, had a look at our strategic spotlight, Sandy. It's been the Blues going uh, through the middle of the ground and the Bombers have been pushed wide. Funny old game, football, isn't it? Carlton beaten by Brisbane by 73 points. And look what could happen today. Long way to go yet. Bradley Camparelli backs into the pack and he shows courage and he shows class and he's away. Scott Camparelli in towards Harford. Hamill the target. One, two. No mark taken. Play on is the call. Fletcher on the ground. He gets ridden into the ground. But he goes again. Eventually he loses it. Barnard with strength tries to get clear. Held it for a long time. Wider to Mercury. Gee, this is a real arm wrestle at the moment. Scott Buick running for him. Alessio's hand pass and he uses him in towards half forward. Allen could be the stumbling block. And he is, Matty Allen. Well, they know the, they know the Blues that this is the game plan of Essendon to hit that, uh, to kick the ball to that spot where Matthew Lloyd is usually on the burst and we've seen it intercepted by Blues at least three times in this quarter. Nelson comes from half back. Flat looking punt kick towards Rat, unable to take it cleanly. Hardwick locks it up on centre wing and we've got another bounce. Sandy, this quarter, Carlton have kicked 1-1, one, one, Essendon three behinds, and we've been playing nearly 20 minutes. Seems longer, doesn't it? Matthew Allen's just playing a loose <laughs> man. Matthew Allen's playing a loose man in defence. And now all the bomber forwards are pushing up and they're going to try and expose the space behind him. Rat, well, he got himself some space, but then hand pass knocked down by Carousella. Good tackle. Masidi the hand pass. Got a high tackle. It'll come back to Joe Masidi for a free kick. Just a little bit of a delay to ascertain whether it went to Essendon's advantage and when it didn't, it's come back. Fletcher has pushed up onto that uh, half forward line. Kick by Mercedes to the 50. Fletcher from behind. Speak of the devil. We've got two Fletchers on the ground, both wearing number 31 for opposing sides. It's a big enough kick to put this through. Dustin Fletcher, a mighty roost. Walks close. Just missed it. It was a great kick, Jared. Well, for drop punt, it's, uh, it's gone all 65 metres. Big kick. Four minutes 20 remaining in the first half. And after Carlton skipped away in the first quarter. It would have been a, such a team-lifting goal. It's robbed them more than just the six points. Bradley straight up the ground. Two defeaties. Reviving memories of his All-Australian year in 95. To Murphy. Wide to Christou. Missed a season and a half of football with back problems and playing just his 10th game this season. Chris Dew's kicked a half forward, a wrestle with Whitnell, allowing Allen to climb. Murphy runs past. The Bombers not watching. Kick by Murphy. Fletcher. Well, it was almost the other Fletcher having a shot for goal, but it's off his hands and out of bounds. Yeah, Justin Murphy does tend to shoot from outside the 50 and he ignored... Matthew Lappin. We saw it happen here a couple of weeks ago, Sandy. That time it went through. This time it's cost them a goal in a final. These are dangerous times, though, for Essendon. As Lance Whitten's kick goes across the face of goal. We've got to throw him in the right forward pocket for the Navy Blues. Yeah, one, one goal either way just makes an enormous distance uh, this close to half-time. Just the one goal scored for the quarter. As Drew said, that was by Carlton. Essendon defending grimly. Mercedi puts it onto his boot very smartly. Fletcher's in trouble. Fletcher is in trouble. He was the meat in the sandwich in that altercation. McKay loses it to Kuda Fides. Fletcher still down. Kuda's kick, not a good one. Back to Mercedi again. Pressure football forces him wide, and we've got to throw in on centre wing. Fletcher has a problem. Yeah, you got the knee of uh, Kuda Fides either in the. Uh shoulder blade or the ribs just have a look there there it is right in the right shoulder blade which uh, wouldn't tickle at all but uh, we've seen the bombers coming out of the fence twice in the last minute both times blazing torpedoes going nowhere who defeaties oh, that was good play Ratton, brown and hammer all combining and here comes fraser brown spearing the pass in towards man couldn't take the mark for curry from half back gives it across to wallace dean wallace Bomb bombs to no one. Clears it away, exactly right. McKay is there to push it down to Bradley. Bradley off to Rice. Carlton chip, chip, chipping away. Doing it pretty well. Aaron Hamill doing it very well. Wobbly old punt kick though. Barnard couldn't take it. Whitnell does well. Whitnell does very well. Eventually it comes back. And it's Wallace. Somerville coming onto the ground. May get there before Fletcher. Both get a bad bounce as it spins. 
over the sidelines. Also in trouble is Wellman. Could be a dislocated finger. They might be popping back into place. So let's not watch. Oh, <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> it does not to be popping all that well. Boundary throw in. Overrun by Hamill. Rat great with his hands. Christo. Oof. As he kicks towards the 50. Gee, Wellman got back into the marking contest. Yeah, Bent finger and all. Ratton another hand pass to Brown. He was a little bit slow. Run down by Johnson. Hardwick run down a good tackle by Lappin. Johnson just inside the line. Here's Wellman once again. Heffernan dispossessed. Camparelli. Oh, Johnson, he's a hard nut, isn't he? And good tackle by Hamill. What? Wellman coming from the ground. That may have uh, penetrated the skin, that dislocation. Or they haven't been able to ride it just at the moment. No, I'm just looking at now, Jared. It is well and truly still dislocated. Yeah. Camparelli really felt the bump from Johnson. And then Johnson himself, the subject of a top tackle. Two minutes remaining to half time. 7 4 Carlton. Three goals, nine Essendon. Young comes on for Wellman. Hamill takes clean possession. McKay. This was gone. It's a Carlton free just as oh. McKay was breaking away. Now, what about advantage up by? Yeah, I, th I think what's happened there, Drew, is his, his field of vision is probably about 30 degrees, and the ball had already travelled out of that area, so he wouldn't have been aware that it was to Carlton's advantage, but certainly should have called it, but uh, just didn't see it. He actually called it, John, and then changed his mind. Is that all right to do that? Uh, I'd, like not, I'd like to see them not change their mind. Depends <laughs> if you've got your money on the Bombers or not. <laughs> you could do a promo for AFL football. I wouldn't like to see that. <laughs> Fraught with danger if they change their mind. Wobbly old kick up towards half forward. Kudafides has been magnificent. Gets it to the front of Murphy, but Fletcher does well off the ground. Bradley, the veteran, at centre half back. He's having a good day as Bradles. Back towards the middle. Hamill, uncontested. Speaking of good days. Aaron Hamill, 10 kicks, 4 marks. A big first half by the Blues. In towards Whitnell territory. This is amazing. Whitnell at half forward. And it's just a goal like this that could really, really break this game and hurt the Bombers very, very badly. They haven't been able to kick one in this quarter. Oh, now Carlton has kicked two for the quarter. Mark McCurry ran alongside the mark there to put Lance Whitnell off, and when he's drilled the goal, McCurry ran off his line of kick and just went straight at McCurry to tell him. Well, as the Crows have proven, or proved, you've only got to get it right in September. And the Blues have looked shocking at various stages during the year. They've been pumped by a number of sides. But they look like they're as good as anybody going for the Premiership just at the moment. Lance Whitnell joins Aaron Hamill as Carl Boone's multiple scorers. 8-4, plays 3-9. Brown taken out of it, long from the middle. They've got half a minute to kick a goal, the Bombers, and they so desperately need it. Rioli might give them the chance. He's a look like it came off Craig Bradley, but uh, Rioli's grabbed it. Bradley is an argument. Yeah, we see the uh, marking contest looks pretty much all Dean Rioli's, but uh, Bradley's had a tiny bit of it, though, Jerry. Just one kick, one hand pass, and one mark so far for Rioli. He spent time on the bench. This is a big kick for the Bombers. A big kick. She's a missing goals this quarter. Unbelievable. That's the siren sounding to end a disappointing quarter for Essendon. At quarter time, they were three goals five. They are now three goals ten. Carlton, on the other hand, well, this crowd and the Carlton members giving their side a standing ovation. For the first half of footy, they've pumped up. They're on seven. And importantly, some of them back into the middle and Alessio up forward. 24 points is the margin. Some of all wins it, charging at uh, Matthew Allen. Here's Camparelli. Prolific possession winner in the first half to Lappin. A juggling mark is a beauty. First take out of the centre. Goes the same way as the first half with the Blues. Lappin just forward of the middle. Kicks up towards the 50. The lead is on. Mark will 
attempted mark by Beaumont. Not there. Oh. The Buick hand pass. Terrible. Almost a tragedy for Essendon in the opening minute of the second half. Well, surprising mistake there from Darren Buick, who's played in so many finals. It actually just clipped the hand of his teammate on the way through, but uh, very dangerous. Whitnell, his trouble. Brown couldn't take it. Masidi gives the hand pass back to Buick. He defends back towards the centre of the ground. Somerville couldn't take it on the half volley. His immediate opponent, Allen. Put Beaumont under the pump, they could finish up losing at Carlton. Carousella on all fours, back to Somerville, finally to Hardwick. They may get some run here. He gets them back over the centre towards Lloyd, a long way from home. He sneaks away from Silvani. Lloyd, can he go all the way? Pumps a long bomb in towards Alessia, over the top, it bounces. Comes back, but not enough, just the one behind. It looks like Matthew Lloyd's going to be asked to play that half forward role. And Alessio to stay back as the target in the goal now. Bradley kicks in for the Blues. Oh. Michael Long chops off. Well, they've been threatening to do that all afternoon. And finally, the Blues have uh, made the blue. To repeat myself, and Michael Long has intercepted. Well, this will look nearly like a pass to a man in the wrong colours. Michael Long taking a long run up at this. The man on the mark is only 40 metres from goal. Long narrows the gap. What value in the short kick out? Oh, you have to go with the short kick out. That was a 40 metre kick out. If you get, uh, you're going to make a mistake. Most coaches like you to make a long mistake, but you've got two of the most experienced players on the park there. Steve Silvani with Craig Bradley uh, making the blue. And it's been. In between goals, the Bombers have kicked just eight points. So they were due. It was their captain. Now the margin just 17 points. And importantly... Some of them coming from the other side of the, uh, the line through the centre circle. So, uh, yeah, free kick actually paid. Some of them trying to employ any tactic he can to get over the dominance of Matthew Allen and actually ran across the centre circle to come from the same side. Do we see him coming from the side? He goes over to the side of Matthew Allen. But you're allowed to do that after the bounce, surely. And you're only allowed to... You've got to start from the other side, Jeremy Run at him. Well, now it's just outside the 50. Wellman under pressure. Boot the ball. Beaumont wasn't going anywhere from his boot. Nelson applying the tackle. And the umpire will ball it up. Well, the Bombers are showing a little bit uh, of the old pressure. They've been dishing it out all season. They copped plenty in the first half, but it looks like... They're intent on uh, getting back to their old self in this second, in this third term. Somerville working on the body of Allen. The ball comes down to Heffernan, but straight onto the chest of Matt. Away to McKay from the Coca-Cola logo on the wing to set a half forward over the head of Massey and a fingertip mark by Darren Buick. And the Bombers playing on quickly. Carousella, a long kick to the 50. Camp there, Alessio. Touched down by Silvani. Lloyd at the back, unmarked. Open goal. Hope she goes. Three goals to Matthew Lloyd, two in a row for the Bombers. We take a bow, Darren Buick. What an outstanding grab it was to turn it over. The Blues are in attack. They look to be going towards Massey and then uh, on towards goal. But Darren Buick made up for a little blue earlier in the quarter. Carousella went long. Alessio was there. And that's what's been missing in the uh, first half for the Bombers. Some options up forward, some height to uh, create a little bit of confusion down there. And Lloyd kicked truly. Well done, Darren Buick. Well done, Matthew Lloyd. 11 points the margin. Back come the Bombers. Somerville, Whites, Allen over the top. Ratton, well pinned, gives it to Nelson. Towards Whitman. Barnard, an effective spoiler. Beaumont thumps it down in front. There's a chance for Essendon to clear once again through Hardwick. Around the body, he pops it. Maybe not far enough. Nelson couldn't take it cleanly. Mercedes gives it away. The Bombers are threatening now. Michael Long's in the middle of the MCG. Spears a worm-burning pass towards Buick. He's dangerous. He loves this situation. 48 metres out. Goes for goal. High, but he pulls it away to the left. And one behind. Ten-point margin. Well, then there was a fair bit more time to set something up. He'd be disappointed, Boris.
Bradley. Strangely, he went long, Sandy. <laughs> to the outer side. Big ask for Murphy. Had to beat a couple. Slapped in towards Brown if he could keep it in play. Didn't have it up. He's screaming for a free kick. Umpire Andrew Coates says throw it in. Well, John Russo. Looked as though he had it. And I'd like to know how he got rid of it because he's got it there. And uh, I'd, uh, I'd suggest that he's done a dribbly <laughs> little handball. It's almost a flick pass, as Jared's telling me now. Well, so, it's uh, with the open hand. Yeah, it could throw. easily have been penalised for incorrect disposal, Jared. Well, they've got another chance in towards McCurry. McKay is at the back with an effective spoil. Waiting down in front was Lloyd. Morkoff there as well. Lloyd and Silvani just winning the loose balls, the neutral balls through the middle of the ground at the moment. And Carl uh, haven't been given the time to get extra players back in defence. Therefore, the bomber forward line looking more dangerous. Kudafidis had a good first half. Camparelli, sensational. Picks up another possession. Goes over the middle. Wallace out of the air. Well, it's going to work. Right. Barry Young. Young to Hardwick. In towards half forward, Fletcher dropping back into the pack, unable to take it cleanly. They've gone up a notch here. Here's Rioli. Rioli for home! And here come the Bombers. Dean Rioli. With only his fourth kick for the game, kicks his first. He never misses his bloke. Paul Barnard was outstanding in that area, and so was Gaddy Moorcroft who applied an outstanding tackle and Team Rioli, he hasn't had any of the footy today but uh, he could finish being a vital player, kicking goals. Well have they made it a game now, the Bombers, with the first three goals of the second half to get to within four points. Allen this time wins in the middle but it goes to Michael Long, hand passes to himself, brilliant football by Long! Out to Buick. Buick's left footer inside 50. Moorcroft! Well, it's been the senior players that have lifted for the Bombers, inspired by their captain Long, ably supported by Darren Buick, who have uh, seen them set this up to be a goal that could snatch back the lead. Inside 50 is this quarter, the Bombers six. The Blues just 50 one time, and this has made a certainty that the Bombers will regain the lead. Well, there's a bit going on off the ball between the Ruckman and Gary Moorcroft with a little bit of a smile on his way past to the Carlton skipper, Craig Bradley. Moorcroft will kick a goal here, and would you believe the Bombers will be in front inside nine minutes in the third quarter. What a start to the second half by Essendon. They've kicked four goals, two to nothing. Some of them having plenty to say to uh, to Matthew Allen, and Matthew Allen just seems as though he's a little bit off his game at the moment. But Gary Moorcroft looks as though the Bombers are just making sure they've got plenty to say to the Blues to let them know that they're still on the park. What a turnaround, Hogg, and he is a little pit bull. Don't worry about that. He's on the ground. And he's on Darren Buick, who's doing the damage for the Bombers. Essendon, 31 possessions in this term. Carlton, just 11. Somerville slams it out of the middle. Fraser Brown almost taken high. Spot on, Sandy. Away he goes. Carlton wanting a stadium. The Bombers tightening the screws just a little. They lead for the first time. Silvani in front. Almost juggles the mark. Is called to play on. The fullback of the century tries to surge it clear. Hogg getting his first touch. And Buick coming in over the top, and look at that, you are going nowhere. Well, Sandy, Buick has had six possessions in the opening nine minutes of this third quarter. He's been the spark. At half forward. I think also importantly, uh, Peter Somerville has neutralised Matthew Allen, who hasn't got near the football fast the centre line in this term. Allen doing it with the left hand taken by Moorcroft. A high ball. They come charging at it. Dean Rioli, this exciting young man who's got the number 43 locker at Windy Hill. 
He's going to have a shot. And Sandy, when I was down the rooms interviewing Dennis Pagan, it was right next door to the SM rooms. Kevin Sheedy was going off his tree. I don't know what he was saying, but I'll tell you what, it's worked in this first 10 minutes of the third quarter. Rioli coming into the game. Kicked one a few moments ago. He's kicked 28 for the season. Now he's kicked another one. Two goals to Dean Rioli, both in this term. The Bombers are threatening a big quarter. Well, it's just been a, uh, an outstanding start, led by their senior players. And that's who Carlton will be relying on now to just hold sway. They've got to come back into this match, uh, and it'll start at centre bounce as Justin Murphy's uh, been pushed into the middle. Now the Bombers lead by eight points. Carlton scoreless in this quarter. They've got to do something about it. Allen crashes to the ground. Brown does too. And the umpire will ball it up. What a burst by the Bombers. They've lost just four games this season. And look at this wrestle for the honour to be the last man up with the footy. Both sides now with loose players in defence for the Blues. It's their captain, Craig Bradley, and he's probably the best player on the ground to uh, be a loose man. It's still going. It's like a couple of dogs. You don't win premierships or get a Brownlow vote for being the last up with the footy. And the runner's getting a serve too. Yeah, get off. Good move. Was the umpire reported last night for the <laughs> Shepherd? <laughs> Serious. He should have been. Should I think have he been. was uh, playing 19 minutes. Time. Unbelievable. You mean the runner reported for the Shepherd? <laughs> yes. <laughs> said oh, the sorry, the runner. <laughs> Unbelievable. Somerville goes over his head. Long Shepherds. Rioli. Yeah. Rioli. Long to full forward. Silvani well placed. They juggle it, Lloyd! Gets it through the pack, but not all the way. Kudafidis. Clears for the Blues. They need a score, and they need it quickly. A one-hander by Nelson at left half-back. He comes up short. Camperelli low to the ground. This is better for the Blues. Ratton runs through the wing. Half-distance pass to Allen, who's rucked and gone forward. Matty Allen pokes it over to Murphy. 48 metres out from goal. Justin Murphy. Can he slot this? Long kick. Beautiful kick, but just offline, a behind. But it's their first score for the quarter in 13 and a half minutes. Well, they missed an opportunity there, the Blues, but so too did the Essendon Football Club with Dean Rioli electing to try and outsprint his opponent. He's not quick enough for that in the final. Sort of laid it off. Buick. To the outer side. The bomber machine. Going up a gear, Barnard. Floating hand pass is OK for Smoke and Joe Mercedes. Runs his full distance, looks from centre wing in towards half forward. Lloyd again, the meat in the sandwich, and the man in front was Dean Rice. Did well, floating it wide to Bradley. He defends across that half-back line for Carlton. Kicking up towards centre wing, smashed towards the line. Brown is there, Somerville is there. Play on, and they do, Heffernan and along. Now there's been a late whistle. The ball was out of bounds. We'll have a throw in on the outer wing. Bit of tension on that Blues bench with young Chris Massey, Ange Christie, Simon Beaumont, and Aaron Hamill. An excellent first half, having the wind taken out of his sails there. Long, if it sits, maybe. Oh, the wizard is at work. Here he goes, popping it over the top. Mercedes, very young. Young's inside 50, goes for goal. Barry Young kicks his first goal. What about the master though, Michael Long, who's dominated a, a final series before, and he is just starting to warm up. Dennis Pagan going to be having nightmares about Michael Long if, in fact, the Bombers prevail today. Because it was him that set that goal up. And a pretty good finish by Barry. 13 points the margin now with the Bombers in front. Allen wins down to Brown. Masigi wraps him up. 
and the umpire will ball it up. And just looking forward, uh, Sandy, and we're not discounting the Blues here because this match certainly uh, still alive. But one starts to salivate with a long picket matchup. Oh, that's wetting the appetite. It would be a beauty, wouldn't it? Somerville wins, but Ratton grabs it for the Blues. Partly smothered. Hand pass back to Hogg. Came from Adam White. Both started the game on the bench. It bounces through almost to the 50. Barnard shrugs it. And look at all the Essendon players here. Dean Solomon unmarked on centre wing. On behind play. And a real good blue going on behind play. It might be an Essendon goal. Solomon Long. Rioli! Rioli's kicked two goals in this term. Coming up for a hat-trick. Paul Barnard's been a star in this term. And out. An out star. He has just uh, turned the ball over to his side's uh, favour a number of times. And let's have a look at uh, Dean Wallace and Aaron Hamill. Dean, Aaron Hamill was chasing Jared, and Dean Wallace just ran straight at him. Everything tucked in and just uh, took him out as the chaser. And uh, in response to this, Hamill gets up and there's a bit of a to do. Rioli started the season on the it has, list. I think there's been a report too. The umpires just spun around Aaron Hamill. I think he's missed it. For a behind, so he's kicked two goals too. Young Dean Rioli playing just his 17th game, a first season player. Well, he certainly looks ruffled, Aaron Hamill, after that. Yeah, well, the umpire has taken his number, he's writing it down now, Drew. What would the report have been for, John? I have no idea. It, uh, there was a bit going on down there, so it could have been anything. Silvani <laughs> short to Nelson. 67 plays 53. Essendon leading. Hard work. Is there? Somerville is there. Together they smash it over the line. Sandy, the only thing I should say is maybe it's Dean Wallace that's been reported for some contact on Hamill, but uh, the numbers well, certainly went into the book. Yeah, we'll have it clarified. In the meantime, a throw in. Push out the back. Murphy won't get clear of Heffern and, and Carousella. Aaron Hamill. Picture tells the story there in one instance anyway. Murphy, Nelson, the hand pass okay to Brown, hurriedly onto the left foot, spinning it towards the line. Lappin and Hardwick see it over. Darren Buick, seven possessions in this term, and uh, haven't they been effective? Joe Masuti's also been good with his hands. He's had one and four, and uh, Dean Rioli's had five kicks. And just missed one, could have been uh, a couple for the quarter. Wallace smashing it down towards Carousella. Solomon, no one getting clear. Dean Solomon gets a couple of pats on the shoulder. Pats of encouragement. And a bounce on centre wing. Stunning third quarter start by the Bombers. Just having a look at the Carlton statistics just for this quarter. And they'd, uh, they'd have 40% of players drew without a possession. Here's uh, Wallace. He chops his way through. Solomon gives it to Harvard. He can go, and he does, in towards Fletcher. Fine grab by Dustin Fletcher, those telescopic arms, giving him the opportunity to stretch this bomber lead. Well, this has been the most telling move, I think, of the afternoon. Fletcher stabilised them in the second part of that second quarter when the Blues really could have just finished the game off, could have buried them completely. He's only kicked three goals for the season as he spent most of his time in defence. He starts that right and stays right. I think the other big one is, uh, once again, Peter Sumble back into the ruck. And uh, this time, getting on top of Matthew Allen. As the Blues make a change, Ozzy. Yes, they make another change. I was just talking to Brian Sheen, the emergency umpire. He's still not too sure exactly whether it was Wallace or Hamill that got reported, so we'll have to wait to the end of the game by the sounds of things. Big kick out towards half-back flank. Oh, Arch forwards, is. magnificent. McCurry the short pass. Any amount of players. Matthew Lloyd takes the mark. Lloyd's kicked three. He kicked five in the qualifying final. He's up to 85 goals for the season, and that's the most in a season for an Essendon player. Since the Buddy Holly of football, Jeff Blethen kicked 107 in 1972, a long time ago. Lloyd for his fourth. Hooked it. He's kicked three goals, three. 
just an indicator of how it's dried up for the Blues. In the first half, Camberelli had 17. He's now had three in this turn. Hamill had 13. He hasn't had a touch. Kudafit is 13. He's only had one. Ratton and Brown had 25 between them, and they've had just four between them in this turn. Just the one behind for Carlton so far in this quarter. Murphy towards Sexton and Kudafitis at the back, Barry Young. Well, an errant hand pass opens the door for Nelson. He kicks long out of the shadows into the sunlight. Manton could have been held. Solomon scooped it up nicely. Piercing hand pass. Carousel, look out. Did get rid of it. McCurry's also in strife. The tackling has been fierce as you would expect from the word go today. And with just on seven minutes remaining in this quarter. But despite the fact that the Bombers have uh, regained the ascendancy and they have got a 16-point lead on the scoreboard, they have missed a couple of other goals. Uh, just in the last couple of minutes, it really could have stretched them. Blood rule for Brown. And who knows, if the Blues can just get one back, those missed shots can uh, will cruel them at the end. Scratch on the knee. Yep. So Chris Massey will come on for a moment. If the Bombers can win, that'll be a double because their reserves got into the grand final today with a 12-point win over the Western Bulldogs, and they'll play St Kilda next week. So uh, both sides in a grand final would be something. Somerville and Allen, one by the latter, poked straight to Masidi. To half forward, Sexton giving the appearance that he was held. Doesn't go on with histrionics, just plays on to Silvani off the rack. Brett Ratton heads to the outer side. Glenn Manton is his target. Copped a bit of a shove from Wellman. And was able to control the ball and control it nicely. Gave it to Nelson, who kicks up towards Harford. What a screaming mark by Solomon. Sensational stuff, but worth another look. As he goes out towards the centre wing area, McKay takes the mark and he'll put Carlton back into attack. Their inside 50 thrusts have been few and far between. Just a couple so far in this term, compared to Essendon, 13. They get an opportunity at the back. Allen will coast in the goal. Matty Allen kicks his first. Carlton's first for the quarter. And it does give them continued hope. Oh, there's no doubt they're still in this game, Sandy. Yep. The Blues have just effectively uh, been shut out of this game completely for 10 minutes. That's all it is. They, uh, they know they can play good footy. They know they can do the same to the Blues. That was a lucky one, but you've got to take your breaks when they present themselves. Fraser Brown about to come back for the Blues. Six minutes remaining to three-quarter time. It took Carlton 23 and a half minutes to get their first goal of this third quarter. That's a free kick. That's, he's been doing it uh, almost at every centre bounce, Jerry. Long gets the kick out of the middle. Punched by McKay from behind. Moorcroft gave it straight to the opposition. Ratton to Bradley. Long to centre half forward. Whitnell's there. Punch from behind comes to Solomon. Oh, he spun on the <laughs> tackle. Lucky to get away with it. Away to Young. Now to Moorcroft. Free kick. Oh. Rice over his shoulder, a push in the back, anything you want. The centre bounces have been really interesting in that every time Summerall is opposed to, he leads with the left arm. Doesn't look at the footy. Uh, not looking at the footy or right arm, doesn't look at the footy, just pushes it into Matthew Allen. Now, that's the first one that's been blatant enough to be through. Carousel a mile in the clear, he's missed a couple and he's missed again. Three behinds for Blake Carousella today. It's almost doing an Arnold Brightus. Dennis Pagan looks on to see who next week's opponent will be in the grand final. Well, it's going to be an all-Victorian grand final for just the fourth time this decade. McKay takes the short kicky. Comes one step further out of defence, Camparelli. And for those that uh, aren't North Melbourne supporters, Arnold Bright has kicked six points in the uh, first game of 19... 77, the first grand final. Kicked out uh, four or five goals in the replay. Two defeatings. Oh, put his teammate under the pump. That was Lappin. Thank you very much. Bradley goes to ground. And then be a ball up. Under five minutes left.
Nelson Bradley. Wallace again in the thick of things. Allen trying to get a run at the ball. With him is Somerville. Pote wide, Rioli. Kicked a couple of telling goals. Interesting hand pass to McCurry. Off to Hardwick. Around the body he goes. Good kick. Good kick. Gives Joe Messini a chance. To just pop it over the top. Now Heffern on the run here. He's a good young player, Chris Heffern. And oh, that's a sensational goal. He's one of the young guns we mentioned earlier that's set to explode at Windy Hill. Chris Heffernan, the boy from Tarang. Yeah, and he was a much sought-after player at draft level. The Brisbane Lions had a crack at him at the start of this season when they had the number one draft pick. And uh, despite the fact that he's had a very quiet day, we know he's a, uh, a brilliant player in the making. So skilled, and we see it all here on display. What a shot from the tightest of angles. He's only had four kicks, and that was perhaps one of his more important ones this year. Well, in the first hour of the game, the Bombers kicked three goals. In the next 27 minutes, they've kicked seven. Somerville wins in the middle, but Shark by Ratton. Inside the 50 to Whitnell. It comes back to him. Open goal square. They want this goal badly. It's a way to the right. Well, Paul Barnard has been really testing the umpire... Uh with his uh, body on body, John on Lance Whitnell, you just get the feeling he's going to give away an important one soon. Yeah, I think you're right, Jared. He's just pushing it to the limit, isn't he? Just under four minutes remaining to three quarter time. Barry Young kicks into himself. Whitnell almost gets there for the smother. Manton at the back takes he the hold. He's off. Now he goes. A very high ball. Players looking into the sun. Massey. Hamill, oh, he flipped it up. That was a throw, incorrect disposal. Advantage to the Bombers. Blumfield, half back to half forward, but all Carlton. It should have been a mark to hold. It gets behind the Buick. Buick, 51 metres out. Okay. Back to Carousella, and he's given it away. McKay to Manton, and the Blues setting up from half back. Hold, that's better. Sexton, across to Rice. And they switch to the southern stand side of the ground. Massey in a bit of space, centre wing. So he's coughing it up in the middle of the ground, really does kill you because all your midfielders are running forward. And as we see, there's so many free options now, spare for the Blues. Allen to Camparelli, he goes short of the goal square. McCurry comes down to the front and a chance for Hardwick to clear. Half distance pass and Masiti takes the mark. Outside the 50 to Carousella, the ball getting away from him. Well done, McKay. Ball out of play. He had a look like Carousel down the field. All he could see was Justin Murphy. Yeah. Not what he wanted. So a throw in. Just a couple of minutes left in this third quarter. Hammer plucks it out of there. This time gives it to Murphy. Centering into half forward. Oh, Solomon again was a fly. Good hand pass by Ratton. Should be a goal to Camperelli. The Blues stop it. They hang on, and we're back to a 10-point ball game. What a take from Aaron Hamill out of the boundary line, out of the back, from the boundary throw-in. Just have a look at it. Just pure strength against uh, Wallace, and then lays it off to Murphy, who gets them going. But it was Ratton, I think, who got the important uh, take. So good around that loose ball situation. Bang, goal, Camp Rally. Carlton will not go away. Ten points is the margin. Good work by Hamill. Out of the middle, it's McKay. Well tackled. One arm pin makes it difficult. Heffernan up oh. like the Indian rubber man, and somehow he gets clear. Superb play. He's got wonderful talents in towards half court and chopped off by Silvani. Speaking of wonderful players, been grand for a long, long time for Carlton veteran of 270 games he goes to Kudafidis in the back pocket comes across the ground right across to Simon Fletcher somehow he recovers thought for a moment he was gone 
He kicks towards centre wing. Allen couldn't take the mark. Spoiled by Alessio and then hassled over the line. The two big men, like a couple of wrestlers. Eddie Allen looks tired, Jared. Well, he's carried the workload individually and he's done it for most of the season. Maybe they've got to find a replacement for five minutes. Kuda Fides would be the likely option. Under two minutes of three-quarter time. He'll get a breather then. Comes to the back of the pack. Plumfield spirals the ball out of there and it bounces out at right half full. Ten points the margin and ten more scoring shots for the Bombers. They've kicked ten goals each. Essendon and Carlton. Allen worked off it by Alessio. It comes to Long. Lloyd and Silvani, nice old wrestle there. Peter Feedy's ties up. It's a throw by Bradley. Lucky to get away with that. Murphy. Ball oh. pinned to him. Now, John. Ooh. What about Bradley here? Is he yeah. playing rugby after all these years? Bradley's was a forward pass that looked like a throw. I agree with you. But Jared can answer whether that was a prior opportunity to dispose of the footy before that tackle. That's your domain, John, and I'm not entering into it. You always do. <laughs> the Bombers a chance here. 40 metres out. Heffernan for another one. Hooked up too far from behind. That's the margin still only two straight kicks. See Heffernan starting to come into the play. That's uh, the throw of Brattles. <laughs> he clenched the fist after the ball had gone. Could have used the shovel, couldn't he, Drew? <laughs> oh, dear. McKay to bring it back into play. 11 points in it. Bradley's going to full forward for the Blues. He's taken the CD with him. Manton from the kick. -in. Towards centre wing, Hamill will be one of the flyers. Barry Young there also. Kuda Fides does well. Off to Camper Rally. G1 in the closing seconds will be beautiful. Strength by Barnard. To the outer side he goes. Now he's got Fletcher and Long out there. A couple of cruise machines. Michael Long's away. Bradley can stop oh. his run. It's not a good kick. Set up beautifully for Murphy to come over the top of Carousel. Unlike Michael Long. Play goes on. Rice has it on the outer side to Bradley. He's still a long way from home. Long on the mark. But he's moved forward, Sandy, for the first time in this match. Could run out of time. They need a mark right now. Oh, they almost got it, but no. Three-quarter time. Carlton still in this game. But a big comeback quarter by the Bombers. They beat it seven for the turn. The final quarter of the second preliminary final. For the loser, the season is over. The winner, the Kangaroos await. They're jumping early again, so some of them are penalised. Allen, who looked tired going to the huddle, he's carried a huge load all season and done a mighty job. Down towards full forward. Manton should soccer off the ground. He goes again. It's spinning back, but not enough. One behind. Well, I've got to say that was a strange decision from John Harvey. I've seen Ruckman jump early for the last 10 years. Yeah, if they, uh, if they make contact and it's an unrealistic attempt to, to contest that ruck contest, then they'll normally be penalised, Jared. Buick to himself, and then he spots Johnson. Great. Oh. Under great pressure from a bigger man in Lance Whitnell. But there's still only a couple of young guns, these two, Whitnell and Johnson. Mark Johnson, just 15 games, but looking very good. Fletcher. Around the body, putting them inside 50. Silvani, great spoil. Long lurking. Oh, Clever yeah. kick. Oh. Sensational play by Michael Long. But can Alessio pick up the spinning ball? Yes, he can. What a start for the final quarter. Don't you just love the shape of that ball? And it spins and spins like that, Jerry. There's been a lot of men over the years get. Uh, in embarrassed in front of hundreds of thousands of people because of the shape of the ball and I reckon Steve Alessio was thinking it was his turn <laughs> but fortunately this was just a great kick for Michael Long that's inspired there was two players there I'm not sure who he wanted it to go to but 
Steve Alessio did the job for them. And a big get uh, by Dustin Fletcher. When it looked like Matthew Allen had that ball marked, he stole it and bombed it forward quickly. Vital first goal of this last quarter to the Bombers. Somerville wins in the middle. Down to Young. Hurried, hurried kick inside the 50. McKay at the back drops what he might have taken there. Carousella. Oh, oh, long drive by and got off the ground again. This time in danger. And the free kick to Rice. Yeah, certainly an indiscriminate kick there of Dean Rice over the ball. Dangerous situation. Big pack in midfield. No mark completed. Ratton. Quick hands in the middle. Brown. Whitnell underneath it. Manton at the back claiming a mark. Plowen says the umpire. Has to hand pass away and gives it up. Wellman's kick to Rioli. It was brilliant in the third quarter. Rioli's kick. Johnson. Straight to Alessio. Rice got a fingernail to it and dives in after it. Oh, he's gone. He's holding it, Dean Rice. Sees that stuff. It's dead set tough because he did the right thing and tried to get the ball out, but the Bombers were the ones holding it in, John. Yeah, that's where it's difficult. Once he elects to dive on the ball like that, he's in strife. If he's they tackle him... Tried to get yeah. it out. It was Fletcher yeah, holding well, it in. The way the rule reads is once he elects to dive on the ball, he must successfully hit it out. And I agree, it looks very, very tough, but maybe the rules rules committee have to look at it to, uh, to loosen it up a bit because otherwise... The messenger is the bloke in white. Rules Jesus. are going to have a big uh, summer, aren't they? They're exactly the right. <laughs> They've got a lot to look at, haven't they? Well, about a minute ago, Michael Long nearly kicked Dean Rice's head off. Yep. And now he's given up a free kick. And guess who? Michael Long, right in front, 50 metres out. This will make it tough for the Blues. He's hooked it away to the right for a minor score. It's only that bad kick and keeping Carlton in this. And it's certainly still not over. Here we see Dean Rice elects to dive on the footy and they wrap him up. And certainly, as Jared said, they're holding the footy in just as much as he is. But once he's elected to dive on it, he's in strife. Murphy takes the kick out. McKay through some heavy traffic. He did well. Finding Fraser Brown. Off to Bradley. Craig Bradley kicks to half forward. And Whitmore marks in front of Barnard. Important now for Carlton to try and convert here. Whitnell takes him on. Short little chippy. Well, he wanted Allen. Perhaps a little too cute. It may come unstuck. Heffernan over the top. Whitnell goes again. Wider towards Brown. Fraser's in trouble. First one way, then the other. Wobbles it into goal and picks a beauty for the Blues to keep them alive. Well, Lance Whitnell, he... He committed himself to play on, but I think he looked forward and all he could see were Essendon players. He knew he wouldn't make the distance. Tried to uh, do the old Jimmy Stein solo to pop it up for his teammate. Finally, he was lucky enough that Fraser Brown had the skill to mop up and kick a great goal. Second goal to Fraser Brown. Bombers and the Blues a goal each in this last quarter. Allen palms down, but McCurry back to Somerville. Off the side of the boot, Rice leads the chase. Kick by Rice, beautiful kick round the corner to Murphy. 70 metres from goal. Margin 11 points. Kick by Murphy. Brown waits at the back. And waits. Doesn't have to. Two defeaties. Well, Cooter can get the Blues within one kick with a straight kick here. What a mark over Wellman. Well, the buzz at half-time was what a turn-up this was. Carlton in front by four goals. And then Essendon blew them away in the third quarter and kicked seven goals to two. But this could go right down to the wire. We haven't had too much of that in finals this year. Kudafidis gets it. Oh and I think Kuda uh, had a bit of a spell in midfield or even into the ruck. As Matthew Allen is just dropping back. We'll keep an eye on him. He's running back to that centre half back position, it seems, but now he's stopping midway in the middle of the ground. 
What a match winner he is. Can he do the unbelievable and pull a final out of the bag for the Blue Baggers? Carlton led by 16 points at quarter time, 24 at half time. Essendon led by 11 at three quarter time. And now they lead by just five points. What a finish. Solomon smothered. Murphy for the Blues. Gets it out. Kuda having a real impact. Dean Rice tucks it under his arm and away he goes. Carlton attacking up towards the half forward line. Fraser Brown rips through the pack. Puts it onto the left boot. Gets very little carry and it's picked up by Wellman. Goes to half back. Not a good kick. Chopped off by Hogg. Carlton challenging. Oh! Hardwick came over the top, couldn't take the mark. Lappin takes the hand pass. Lappin wobbled it to goal. Carlton is in front. Unbelievable. The Blues are back in front. Well, Hardwick goes with the big fly here, and his man is uh, at ground level. And Kuda in the middle. Well, they've got a match up, Kuda. He could uh, rip their heart out here. Kick the last three goals, the Blues. All of a sudden, they've got all the momentum. <laughs> Miss shots at goal. 11 18, 13 7. The Carlton have won only two of their previous five games coming into today. Not many gave him much of a hope. Long gets it out of the middle, but Carlton turn it back. It comes to Rice. The Blues on a roll with two defeaties moving into the middle of four and working wonders in the last quarter. Bradley in a bit of space. But he holds things up. 50 metres out right in front. Could a 35-year-old hamstring manage a 50-metre goal at this stage, Derek? Well, I think he could. He might even go the torpedo. He can't help himself with those every now and again. <laughs> Carlton up by one point. They proudly have won 16 premierships. Essendon next on the ladder with 15. They're trying to defend that against their arch rival. Ratton, standing start by Ratton. Won't quite make it. Oh! That's a big mark, Jared. Oh, well, it's two in five minutes. Oh, not an easy shot, but I think Kuda will bury this one. In ten minutes of football, he's had three marks and coming up for his fourth kick. Blues by seven points. time the Bombers were in a preliminary final was uh, they played at the SCG they were in a similar situation where they had the game they had a 15 or 16 point lead midway through the last quarter the Swans rattled on the goals and they lost by a point it was deja vu upon us David Parkin 57 years of age Still barking instructions. A crowd here today of 80,519. Dean Rice. He's still got a ton of run. Gets his kick as he was tackled. Hamill with absolute strength, but it's Wallace who tops it off. Solomon. Pressure now on the young bombers. Solomon towards the 50. Lloyd Silvani. McKay on all fours, couldn't take it, slapped towards the line, Rice taken out of it. It's over the line with McCurry and Co. who got it from him. 80,519. Good crowd, long. Wobbly. Wellman's down in the forward line. Wellman keeps it in play. Lloyd! We've waited a long time for a final like this. Could be 
worth the wait. And we've still got 13 minutes to disco out. Maybe it was a Wayne Harms job. Four goals to Matthew Lloyd. Oh, the old spinning ball again. <laughs> the padding only needed to be a centimetre wide, and that was a point. Be interesting to see how Summerall approaches this centre bounce because on each occasion, although he's starting on the opposite side of the line, he comes over towards Matty Allen before the contest. Bounce by umpire Harvey. Somerville wins in the middle, a touch by McCurry. All the way. Out in front of Blumfield. Will the Bombers get back in front? Blumfield's kick. Lloyd juggles. And gets another one. Oh, oh, oh. Great work, Peter Somerville. He got the tap. McCurry got the little death knock on, and that was bombed down. I thought Silvani had Lloyd covered, but he's a genius. Two of the most miraculous goals in a minute that you'd like to see. Somerville to McCurry. And Blumfield's bomb. He was out, he was gone for all money. I thought he would have swiped it off the ground and Silvani smothered, but he went over the top and uh, did it successfully. From on high, the kick by Blumfield. What work by Lloyd. Sensational, to say the least. McCurry. Gets his kick out of the middle, down towards Buick and Hall. Couple of little pit balls, neither can take it, it's left to Sexton. Heads to the outer paddock, and it spins over the line. Twelve and a half minutes left. To right. some, that twelve and a half minutes will seem like an eternity. Particularly the men behind the glass with the telephones at their ears. Fraser Brown's at full forward, Chris Heffernan is his opponent. Long, in towards the middle. Falls nicely for Murphy. Chance now for the Blues. Murphy goes long. In towards Harford. Lappin and Brown both there. Barnard at the bottom. With strength comes away. Just gets his kick in time, but just pulled off it. And it opens the door for Hamill. Oh. His chip is short under pressure. And it lands in the arms of Solomon. You've got to expect a few errors at times like these. The pressure must be unbelievable. And McCurry. And the fatigue. Yep, Heffernan. Fletcher. It's Essendon by five points towards Dean Rioli. Rioli inside 50. Oh, poor kick. Kudafidis has been wonderful. Manton calls for it. Well spoiled. A tired Sexton keeps it in play. Manton looks exhausted as well. Here's Nelson. Carlton head towards the half forward line once more. Brown waiting down in front. Can he get clear? No, he can't. Barnard will give it to McCurry. Gets away from Hamill, who had to lead his man. Chips it back in towards the centre, and he's got Masiti wide to the outer side. Michael Long loves the open spaces. Weldon's loose on half forward. Alessio's loose. So too Blumfield. The kick is a shocker. And it's marked by Kudafidi. And it's been very much Russian roulette the last time uh, when Hardwick got the football. The Blues had four players running ahead of the ball. Look at that mark by McKay. Sexton. A high ball in towards the middle. Hamill again. McCurry waiting down in front. Almost threw it out to Wallace. Throw Twisting, right. turning, dodging, throwing. He did the lot. And he got pinned for the last one. Throwing. He's at centre into the centre half forward position by the Bombers. It's been costly all afternoon, and again when the game's in the balance, they've done it poorly again. Bradley. Oh, maybe in trouble. Maybe trouble here. The hand pass partly smothered. Look at those tired legs still pumping. Manton, Fletcher, Nelson, a cry of ball. Rioli over the top. And we've got a bounce. Michael Long coming off for the, the Bombers. Blake Carousel to come on. Double change. Carlton also, I believe, making a change. Yeah, Simon Beaumont's coming on for the Blues. Gee, Bradley kicked in once straight to the opposition, which conceded a goal, and uh, his option up near half forward that time. What's the problem with Long, Aussie? Because they can't afford to have him off. Yeah, they're looking at him right now. It's a bit hard to tell from this angle. I'll, I'll keep you up to date, but he's just 
jumped on his back and he's getting a slight rub. It looks like his left calf area, but it's hard to tell from here. No, they've even cramped. Bombers by five points, even though Carlton have kicked one more goal than them. Camparelli works a bit of magic to Fraser Brown, who breaks from half back. The kick up short of half forward. Hamill's been excellent today. Lance Whitnell Barnard contest will be important. The kick by Aaron Hamill. Michael Long being worked on. It's about 40 metres from goal. Bradles put the Blues back in front. He hasn't made the distance. And Hardwick rushes her behind. And maybe there's a bit of age showing on those 35-year-old legs from Craig Bradley. Four points the margin. And we have nine minutes remaining in the preliminary final. Who will play North next week? Solomon just on. Takes the mark behind the wing. Squares the ball to Somerville. Who's worked pretty hard at the body of Allen. Kicked by Somerville to half forward. Alessio worked under it by Sexton. Buick and Hogg off his heel over the boundary line and out at Essendon's left half field. And importantly, most people thought that the Bombers were going to get the easy match of the preliminary finals. Both sides yeah. will go into next week's game having endured bruising affairs. Exactly right. And this is Carlton's third final, including one interstate, and Essendon's second. They've had two weeks off. Carousella, but the Blues are tackling with the tenacity of a side desperate to keep their arch rival at bay. Essendon beat them in the 93 grand final. Well, they are arch rivals, but they can still grin about this battle that goes on to be the last man up with the footy. Scott Camparelli has been taken right out of the game. He's had just one handball in this term. And he's one of the match winners the Blues need firing. Some of them. A belt. Manton to Murphy. Cool and calm. But a poor kick. Hardwick. Speaking about cool, Sam, he has this guy been solid over the, since half time. Yep. Michael Long, by the way, running the boundary line, appears to be okay. Solomon. He's a high flyer, he's a goer. And it's a big kick, but it's well away to the left. Out of bounds on the full. Four point ball game. What do you go through to get to a grand final? Kudafidis was a flyer, but his teammate Allen was in front. Thought about the hand pass. Now goes back. He's had a wonderful year, Matt Allen. Carrying the Carlton rucks. Could have been a free kick to Heffernan. The free kick paid to Heffernan because Lance Whitwell just took his eye off the footy and ran straight at Heffernan before that ball arrived for the marking contest. Here we see him run to him there now. That's why the free kick was paid. Heffernan on centre wing. Lloyd. Lloyd comes out with a long lead. Rioli was in front of him. So too was Nelson. Silvani with Lloyd, they force it over. Moorcroft and Long, both there on the bench. The Bombers are lucky they've got Alessio, who's got a four-inch advantage over Sexton, sitting in the goal score. They can just get the ball forward. Murphy's kick towards the interchange. Six and a half minutes, and it's going to be a long six and a half minutes. Players are exhausted. And Chris Massey running the boundary line as well, trying to get those legs going again. Looking for one last desperate thrust. Oh, takes the hand pass. Carlin into half forward. This looks bad. Cooter again. He looks to have the fresh legs, Cooter. He's, uh, he was the one that won that ball away from the centre or the throw-in, and it was uh, Hamill coming forward to take a great grab. Strong mark by Hamill. Got a magnificent vertical leap. This kick to put Carlton back in front. It's a 55-metre-plus kick. He's done exactly that. The Blues are back in the lead. What a finish. Well, an inspired move to put Kurt into the middle of the ground. And 
Hamill has uh, done the job for them up forward once again. What a takeaway. And you did say ever so quietly at three-quarter time, you had this strange feeling for Carlton might win. The Blues in front by two points with six minutes remaining. What a game of football for the right to play in next week's grand final. Hogg with fresh legs. Back to Bradley. Don't know how fresh his are. Kicked by Brattles. His longest for the day. Hamill waits. Ball knocked forward. Ratton at the back, beaten to it by Hardwick. He goes across the ground. Masiti leads the race. Puts the ball out in front of himself. Great play, Joey Masiti. And the short pass to Carousella at halfback. Inside he goes to Young. The Bombers have to come from behind if they're going to get to the grand final. Kicked by Young. Punched by Silvani. Murphy. Taken to ground, and the umpire will ball it up. And what, Michael Long back on for the Bombers. Well, during the year, Carlton lost 11 games. Essendon lost just four. But in finals, it counts for nothing. And they were described as a B-grade outfit. Matthew By their Hull. own coach. Matthew Hogg has uh, won the battle. Buick off the ground prior on. They need some fresh legs also, the Bombers. If Carlton can hang on and win, it would be one of the most remarkable rises in recent seasons. They've been 11th for the last two years. Matthew Hogg goes long to Whitnall. 50 metres from goal. This youngster has kicked 52 goals for the season. And if he can kick another one here and put them eight points up with four and a half minutes left, Gee, the minor premiers will have a job to snatch this game. Who's on Cuda? <laughs> he's not happy about the distance. He's looking for some options. He's looking for something other than to kick for goal. Might have no choice. It starts right. It swings back. What a goal! <laughs> oh, you'd want to be on the blues now. Good. That's a big kick. Oh, what a kick. I tell you what, after games like this, you can't help but admire the players that take part. I mean, this has been a tremendous game of football. This is a team that was humiliated by Brisbane by 73 points and looked less than average. Bombers are taking some of off from the ground, getting Northcroft back on the ground. Alessio into the ruck. But what a player is Lance Whitnell. That's just quality. That's pure quality. <laughs> Here we go again. Alessio up against Allen. It's the Blues. Kuda <laughs> Fides has been sensational. Whether in the middle, whether up forward, whether in defence, Lappin and Hardwick going at it, Hammer and Tongs. Mercedes, the hand pass off. Put his teammate in Barnard under the pump. They could lose it here. Just inside 50 for Carlton with under four minutes remaining. The Bombers need two goals. And as far as Fraser Brown is concerned, Carlton just need to keep it steady, keep it cool. We're almost there, he says. Whitnell stands his ground. Barnard across half back. Kicks it back towards the centre. It's fisted away from Rioli. Brown's waiting down in front. The look away hand pass is OK to Sexton. He's been knocked from pillar to post, but he gets his kick down to half forward. Ratton couldn't quite take it. Look at Cooter lurking there once again. Hamill has been unbelievable. Hardwick tumbles a punt towards half back. It ricochets away to McKay. He's held it. He didn't have the football. Michael Long takes it now. Maybe a charge for Essendon Looms. Alessio gives it away to Solomon. Solomon looks inside 50. The Bombers need something sensational. They haven't got a free kick out of it. They thought they might have got it. Poor Croft went without it. And Carlton defends through Nelson and defends well. Right oh, Alessio. Oh, oh, oh. What a screamer. <laughs> Get it on the long. Steve Alessio plays on to Masidi. Masidi looks in towards half forward. They need a grab and they've got it this time. Johnson will have a shot. 47 metres out. Directly in front. Mark Johnson, just one goal for the season. But look at this grab of Steve Alessio. He had it, he lost it, he regained it. Well, we spoke about kick it versus long. That'll be just a dream unless this goes through. It's gone through. 
They're still there, the Bombers. Oh, what a kick for a first-year player in front of 80,000 in the dying minutes of a preliminary final. We've seen a couple of big ones from the youngsters. Heffernan slotted one. Whitnell just kicked an incredible goal. And now Mark Johnson kicks one. And with the most enormous amount of pressure. Two minutes left. Just the players now. The coaches can do very little. Somebody you would think would be in charge of Kuta Fudis. Kevin Sheedy and David Park and the opposing coaches both under pressure for their jobs at the start of this season. And probably right now you'd, you'd wonder who wants the job. <laughs> Kuta Fudis, the hand pass back to Sexton. It's a two-point margin in favour of the Blues with just over two minutes remaining in the game. Beaumont has it, slowing it down at centre wing. Good running by Brown. But then he waited and allowed Wellman to take the mark in front of him. The Bombers have the footy with two minutes left. They need a goal to get in front. Fletcher, who played in a premiership as a schoolboy in 93 against the Blues. Kicked by Fletcher up towards half forward. By G. He has been sensational in the last quarter. Two defeaties. That is six marks. And coming up for his eighth kick in this last quarter. Well, he's been saying to the coaching panel for two years he wants to play in the midfield. They've let him loose when it counts most. Well, they'll nearly cheer him off the ground if the Blues can fall over the line here. Taken out by Lappin. It'll be a throw in. A minute 18 left. Carlton by two points. <laughs> Unbelievable tension. I think we'd almost forgotten what a decent final was like. But if this is it, give us more. The Bombers' last roll of the dice, maybe. Johnson. Is it going to be the young guns? He almost threw it out to Mercedi. It looked like a throw. It doesn't matter now. Play on. They need a mark. Alessio in front. Who's at the back? McCurry! McCurry! One behind. One behind. And that's the difference. Sandy, you might have to get the ambulance down here, mate. We're all having <laughs> heart attacks down here. It is unbelievable well, at ground level. Hang on, because if uh, scores are level, got, when the siren sounds, we've got extra time. We've got a man up here, the Bombers. Everybody's got to get one man, because I'll hold the footy. Bradley. Long and wide. Big half. Barry Young. Got to keep your cool. The time's running out. You still got to keep your cool. Barry Young, 70 metres out. This is where they need a big mark. A huge pack of players. Waiting down in front was Rice. His kick is a poor one. Straight to Wallace. The mean bad man. Can he cover himself in glory? He's lost it. And Murphy takes it away. That could be the turnover that cost them. Murphy goes towards the half forward line. Ratner's got it. He'll take his time, and that could just about seal it. Murphy drops in the hole on the 50. He'll pick himself up very slowly. What about the tackle by Fraser Brown back here at half-back? That's the ball going. If it had gone to Fletcher, he could have bombed it from that distance. The luck of the draw in the final. This is uh, just an incredible comeback by the Carlton Football Club. Carlton is into the grand final. In 1993, they prevailed. They went to Sydney in 96, and the Bombers lost their last preliminary final, Sandy. For one point. In a finish very similar to this. They'll be singing the old Navy Blues long and hard into the night tonight as they prepare for yet another grand final. Park and 
So, you know, well done. Fantastic for you. He's singing of his players. Adrian Gallier there as well. Carlton is into the grand final. Just a wonderful performance by this club. The final score on Carlton 16 8 104. Essendon 14 19 103.